Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care People. It's your boy, the Big Canucker here, and I'm feeling like Superman today. Put on the Superman shirt and uh, just having a little bit of fun. Thought I'd make a video here. I've just been having some health issues, so oh, last week was not very good for me, but feeling better, feeling ready to rock and roll. I gotta say thank you so much to a fellow by the name of Bo who uh, contacted me and did a little bit of a switcheroo. I ended up sending him my heart edition, uh, Bob Lum, and uh, he sent me this here, this Native 5 and Maximet, and I call this the Purple Haze because I ended up doing a little bit of custom work to it because it just, you know what, for as good as uh, Spydercos are, and uh, especially the Maximet steel, i got to say that's a freaking wonderful steel, just a little bit sick of the old... Uh, Great, so uh, we'll head to the tabletop. Before then, please, please don't forget to uh, smash the like button and subscribe too as well. We're at a little over 1,200, and I gotta say, hey, thank you guys so much for getting me there. It helped me spread my voice, but yes, please, please uh, smash the old subscribe button. And let's go to the tabletop, and let's have a look at this Native 5. All right, I really, really like this uh, Native 5. Uh, and I love the maximum steel. I mean, a lot of people are saying it was really, really hard to sharpen. Ah, uh, well... You know what? I think if you're using diamond stones, it's not that hard. Uh, I, I'm not sure what it'd be like on something like a zerk stone. I heard that uh, you, you experience what's called a, a carbon tear out when you're sharpening that with something that's not hard enough to cut the carbides. And sorry, sorry, carbide tear out. So basically what the cutting edge here at a microscopic level has little tiny carbides and they're throughout the entire metal and that's what really uh, has your uh, edge retention. So that's what's doing the cutting and they're not wearing very much. Or the kind of the base material will wear more than the carbides. And so when you're sharpening on something that won't cut those carbides, it tears them out. Now, I have not experienced that because every time I've had maximum steel, I've used diamond to uh, sharpen it. And so far, it's been very, very nice and, you know, not too bad to sharpen. So really, really impressed with this maximum steel. So let's go over this here. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a size comparison. Of course, we've got something here, which is the uh, Benchmid 940. This one here is an older one with a 154 CM in it. And also, we'll go over here. This is what I'm kind of carrying today. I just thought I'd throw in my pocket. Is a Spartaco Advocate, which is a truly underrated knife, this Advocate. I mean, uh, Brad Southern designed this thing here, and... Um, I really, really like this knife a lot. I'm not sure why it didn't do as well as it did. A lot of people didn't like that orange peel on it. I think they're crazy. I think this feels and looks like an absolutely classic, beautiful knife. But that just gives you the idea of the size of this, uh, this um, uh, NATO 5. It's got sub 3-inch blade, but still has lots of cutting potential and lots of cutting uh, ability on it here. So let's get these out of the way and let's go over this here a little bit. Okay, so overall length is 6.95 inches, so it's sub 7 inches, which gives it, you know, uh, not, it's not too huge, but you've still got really, uh, even not using the finger trail, you've got, sorry, I was just eating an orange there, you've got 4 inch, uh, sorry, four full finger before you have to worry about coming off, and then if you want to move your finger up, you've got that cutting trail, so you've got lots of room on this knife here, especially with that 50-50 cutting trail. Now the closed length is only four inches, so it's still very, very small enough to kind of uh, be almost not noticeable inside the pocket at being only 2.5 ounces. Uh, now the blade thickness here is 3.2 millimeters, and you can see or most of that here is at the base, and it seems like it's a real, you've got a little bit of a swedge here in the back, and that just adds to the old cutting ability of this gorgeous, gorgeous little knife. Now the blade length is 2.95 inches and your cutting length is only 2.4, so two and a half. And I did notice though, on some of the bigger things cutting, this kind of seemed to get in the way a little bit. So we'll, we'll kind of go over that here, here in a bit. It is uh, the, the back lock or mid back lock. And this one here happens to be very, very drop shutty. So you can see that it, it just drops like nothing. And you want to make sure that your finger is up close to the, to the you know, close to here because when you drop it, if it's not and it's down here, you'll run right into the cutting edge. If you're up close to this, a uh, little bit of a point here, the trail, no no doubt about it, it'll just fall right into your finger into the trail. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself. Now, this of course is made in Golden, Colorado, the United States. So it is a US made knife and um, it is a ambidextrous clip 
as well as four positions. So it's got the top up and tip down too as well. And they say it's a fully flat ground knife. Now, the custom that I did to this here is I just basically dyed this purple. I put on a lanyard and I gave this Maximan a little bit of a patina. And I really, I'm not sure why this patina here around this spider hole didn't uh, patina as much as the rest of it. It's just weird how it's like almost like a perfect circle. I don't know why I did that. I had washed this blade with uh, rubbing alcohol to get everything off of it. And it just is weird. I'm not sure why it didn't patina like the entire thing here too as well. It, sh it should have done the whole thing. But hey, steel is a weird and wondrous thing. And that's what you're going to get for this. As far as this knife is going to deliver to you, it's going to deliver extreme cutting longevity and performance with the fully flat ground blade and I mean making those draw cuts like the ergonomics on this knife are are excellent uh Spyderco does that's one of the best things about a Spyderco knife is the ergonomics that they design into knives they're designed to fit into your hand and work without a whole lot of hot spots this one here has the FRN um, material in the handle and, it, and to me it's just a little like I mean it's really really uh grippy and uh it's great if your hands are going to get wet, if you're working in a Vaseline factory, stuff like that. You need that gripitude, then this nice hat, this knife has it in spades. But I necessarily don't like to have all that gripitude. You know, lots of times, um, if you've got your clip, see this clip here is on this little um, Spyderco symbol, so it's not too bad. But sometimes when you have this clip or a custom clip that's not, your pants are going to uh, go in this bi-directional FRN and it's going to tear the heck out of them. And I, I didn't like how, that's the one thing about this knife that I don't like, is I don't like, when this one comes out of the pocket, it's not as smooth out of the pocket. You, you pull it and it's just got this bi-directional material with these little bit of, of uh, you know, points on them. And it just doesn't seem to come out of the pocket really, really smooth. Uh, and that's my biggest knock on this. I mean, uh, the other thing here I did to it custom-wise, sorry, I forgot, is I heat anodized this um spoon clip and it just i mean this bi-directional material just seems to be really sticky coming in and out of your pocket and that's my main hang up on this knife and i always have a lanyard for that reason i like to be able to pull the pocket the knife out of my pocket with my pinky finger and be ready to use the knife right away and i mean it's got a great steel i think it looks really really nice um, the bi-directional has lots of grip, so it's a working man's knife. It's got um, no real crazy hot spots, but it's just got that A, I think. Spartaco has really leaned, especially lately, towards a lot of these FRN lightweight type of, of uh, knives. And I think it's a little bit boring. I know we all can't have nothing but, you know, straight titanium and all radius titanium and all this stuff. You know, every knife can't be that way. And, you know, there's a pocket every pocket you know every person's pocket deserves a different knife just for me the frn is just a sweet is a wee bit boring uh i would prefer this knife in probably a g10 or a you know something real cool like a, you know like a pack of wood or something like that I, I just think i might end up taking these scales replace them and see if i can get some custom scales i think that'll set off this knife just a little bit more and just kind of some boring frn and that's my only knock on this whatsoever is the fact that the frn is just a little bit boring right now now um another thing about this knife though is this really big kind of ricasso here in this the spider hole for whatever reason and i've used smaller knives like i've got the sage and i've got my little meerkat and stuff like that and i've cut through cardboard doing cardboard like crazy and i've had no issues with it whatsoever but I just noticed with this knife, the way it's maybe built or whatever I was cutting this time, lots of cardboard seemed to get kind of cut up in this little area here. So, it, you know, so usually when that happens, if I'm getting cut with the cardboard caught up in this area, I'll kind of shift the cardboard cutting down in the middle of the blade. But every time I tried to do this one, it seemed to ride up a little bit. And I just don't know if it's just the way the shape of the, you know, the, the cantilever of the blade or what it is but it just seemed like this one for a small knife didn't work as hard as say like something like the sage or the meerkat or you know things like that it just those little small knives have got real big hearts and this one does too but it just doesn't seem like it has that big a heart 
and I had lots of cardboard to hang up in that area and I just don't know what the scoop was but you know it was so for a life that will cut forever I didn't like that part of it so would I recommend this knife I mean I think it's something if you want to get yourself a good little working knife that fits your pocket or a camp knife that you could throw in a backpack that's not too heavy uh, and you're not living in an area where it's really really wet and moist I, you know I, uh, the premium of the max of it I just don't think that's for everybody uh, you know I think this knife in an S30V uh, costing quite a bit less because the cost is up there with this maximum steel don't get me wrong this is a $200 knife in the the good old US of A and here in Canada it's you know it's 286 bucks I just think that that is for forgetting yourself and what you're paying is you're paying for the maximum steel no doubt about it I mean and it's a it's an okay knife too as well but I just think that if you're gonna pay say $160 and get S30V or $140 and get S30V I think you're just that much better off because maximum steel is um it's like it's like pounding in a two inch uh you know using maximum steel to that's just to do uh, some camp you know stuff around or to break up a little cardboard here and there using maximum steel is like using a, a 16 ounce uh sledgehammer to drive in a finishing nail it's just way too much tool than what you really need it for this knife in the ecosystem that it was designed for in an s30v uh, you know costing you know a uh, hundred and a half or even in the United States costing you know 100 bucks or 120 bucks I just think that you're that much better off than paying that extra $80 to get the maximum steel unless you're going to use this for say something like lots of drop cuts and like say uh you know carpet or you're going to be you know using that and needing that awesome edge retention for the maximum steel then I think it's just a little bit overkill with the FRN um, and the price that you're paying for it. So this iteration of the knife, I'm going to probably give a 6 out of 10 uh, just based on the fact that I think it's expensive to have with the FRN. And uh, I think the ergonomics, as far as, you know, drawing the knife in and out, is a little bit too sticky for me, for my taste. And, you know, the hanging up there just a little bit, I think that that's going to be. And the fact that the grain is just getting a little bit boring. Uh, now... I, I want to give that a 6 out of 10. Well, I hope uh, you stuck around to the end and enjoyed my rambling there about this uh, uh, this Purple Haze uh, Native 5 Gray with the uh, Maximint or the Purple with the Maximint. You know, appreciate you guys so much for hanging by and please, please stay safe out there. We're not out of the woods. I want you to keep your stick on the ice. The shining side up. This is the Big Knucker saying adios.